Good evening. Thank you for joining us for what is our first, and we hope our only, YouTube screening of the Upper School Art Show and Scroll Magazine presentation. The annual art opening is a favorite tradition at Holton Arms. Typically, we would arrive in the Sims reception room and the surrounding hallways with great anticipation of what our artists had created. We would mingle and murmur, finding a favorite piece, and then another, and another. We would make sure others had seen the composition of this work and had read the powerful artist statement of another. We would smile with delight as we flipped through the pages of the latest edition of Scroll Magazine. In sum, we would immerse ourselves as a community in the pure joy of looking at and appreciating the creativity and skill of our students. This video is humble substitute and in no way diminishes the importance of marking and congratulating our artists and our teachers in all that they accomplished this year. You will hear from Ben Ferry and Nandini Girdadas as they talk about the many layers of planning and thought that went into this year's curriculum. Then you will see a slideshow of our advanced students' work interspersed with their reflections on the art making process. And from there, we segue to the presentation of this year's Scroll Magazine by Editors-in-Chief Esther Kim and Ava Risser and Leo Editor Sarah Ernest. It goes without saying that this has been an incredibly challenging year. And yet, as you sit back and enjoy the beautiful work that fills your screens, you could easily forget all that went into making it possible. I want to thank Donna McLean, Ben Ferry, Nandini Girdadas, and Monica Campbell for their dedication to their students and to the art making process. And Melinda Salata for expertly guiding the scroll staff towards publication with wisdom, humor, and eye for detail. All of their efforts were truly Herculean, and I know you will enjoy what these wonderful teachers have made possible. Please enjoy the show. Welcome, everybody. It's so good to see you. And as, as, as Ms. Ar Ms. Archibald said, uh, it's sad that we don't get to see the, the physical art in the hallways for several weeks, but we're going to do our best here. So I'm just going to speak to you guys a little bit to start with about our process and how we we were able to pull off what we did this year. And then I'm going to pass the mic over to uh, Mrs. G, as we all know her. Um, but here goes. The most challenging part the art department faced throughout the last year was what do you do when you no longer have the creative spaces of the painting and ceramic studios, as well as the darkroom and digital lab to foster art making amongst your students? We all realized this year was going to be different. But for many, many disciplines, a transition to another space was potentially easier, easier when you weren't confronted with the reality of messy supplies and the shared spaces to use them. We as a department felt the best way forward was to create highly functional, mobile, and enticing supply kits for each of our disciplines so that if the students couldn't come to the studio, we were going to do our best to bring the studio to the students. All told, Mrs. McLean and myself created close to 200 individual supply kits for our respective disciplines. So the students felt like they had everything they needed to be creative and develop their artistic abilities. Mrs. Garrett Adas is in a league of her own. Mrs. G made both home and school kits for 82 beginner students. So if you can start to do the math there, that's 164 kits. And on top of that, she did 20 specialized kits for her advanced students. And then on top of that, she would put together multiple glazing kits for any students that wanted to bring color into their ceramic pieces. Although not ideal, we found a way to make it work and continue the traditions of the fine arts department in a time when students needed their create, creative outlets the most. Some may call the arts a way of escaping from the difficulties of the world. We saw it as a way to channel those, those emotions that oftentimes arise during difficult times into something tangible that could remind everyone that beauty is all around us. We are all so very proud of all of the work that our students and everyone has done in honor of Holton Arms this year. So thank you so much. Is that being kind of a little taste or a little idea of what we had to do to try to, you know, get get supplies to students and, and continue our process. So I'm going to hand the mic right now over to Mrs. G. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> So this year, um, in keeping with our um, school-wide goals, uh, one of my goals for the ceramics program 
was to design a project with a theme that would achieve some of our school-wide goals and would help educate students about the role that racism has played in the U.S., as well as the chasm in the country in many aspects of life. The advanced ceramic students worked on our themed project, Defining Moments, Looking Back, Looking Forward. They thought about the many defining moments in the country and about what kind of society they wanted for the U.S. going forward. They selected one defining moment to research and present and led the class in a discussion. And the range of topics included inequality, racism, food insecurity, climate change, immigration, and social media, to name a few. The students then selected one defining moment that resonated with them for their personal project. The artistic challenge was to represent this abstract idea in a 3D form in clay. As I helped them through their project, I felt incredibly proud of them for pushing their thinking and expanding their worldview in the process and for engaging in this project in a very thoughtful way. All the work that you will see today in the slideshow was created almost entirely at home with my help only virtually. So I'm incredibly proud of my students for making the most of a very, very challenging year, particularly for a 3D medium like ceramics and for keeping the arts alive and well at Holton. And now Mr. Ferry will speak on behalf of Ms. McLean. Thank you, Nandini. And as we said, our thoughts or wishes are, are with the McLean family, and, and uh, we're so sad that she can't be here to share this moment with us. But uh, here goes. I will do my best. DEI stands for diversity, equity, and inclusion. Diversity is the presence of differences within a given, given setting. Equity is the process of ensuring the processes and programs are impartial, fair, and inclusion is the practice of ensuring that people feel a sense of belonging. Throughout this year, the art department has incorporated DEI into our curriculum. For example, the advanced photo students each researched a different photographer whose work has affected social change or call attention to social injustices. We had notable photographers from all over the world speak to photo students about how their images reflect their idea about the world and society. Today's technology enabled us to have speakers from Paris to San Francisco share their experiences with the students as well as answering questions at the end of each talk. I hope you all enjoy the collection of images that reflect the work of the advanced photography students for this year. And now we are going to begin uh, the portion of the program. We're going to hear from um, individual students from each one of our disciplines. And we're going to be starting with um, the Penny Gallagher from Drawing and Painting. Thank you, Penny. Thank you, Mr. Barry. Um, when the pandemic hit, my year suddenly opened up with a lot more free time, and I decided to take art for fun. I have never been the best at drawing or painting, but I've always been a creative person who's found an escape in the arts, and that's what drawing and painting was for me this year. While learning the basics of drawing and sketching, I was able to start my morning with recognizing and observing the life around me and how to capture form. I was never exactly perfect in my sketches, but I was able to create art in a time unprecedented and frightening for many. These little creations helped provide stability and peace for me, even if it was just a small drawing of an old cowboy boot or my hand bent in an odd shape. These little still lifes were the, my most meaningful pieces because they helped ground me in an unsteady world and reminded me of the little pockets of beauty that I sometimes take for granted. In a chaotic world, sometimes a drawing of an old boot can be the only thing that can pro provide you with the sense of stability and assure you that there is always beauty in this world, even in the most simple things. Thank you. Thank you, Thanks, Penny. Penny. And now we are going to hear from Serena Hong. Hi, everyone. Um, I learned a lot from the Defining Moments project, and it was such a privilege to hear from my classmates about their defining moments. With the help of Ms. Girdadas and my amazing classmates, I was able to gain a deeper understanding of the world around me. 
a defining moment for me and I think all minority women was when Kamala Harris became vice president. I think she will be an inspiration for all girls everywhere to see themselves in leading political roles and career paths. Her election inspires all girls and women to pursue their dreams and strive for top leadership positions. I look forward to a future paved by other courageous and powerful women leaders like her. Women who set an example for girls and women to seize opportunities and to grow in as all aspects of life and to challenge barriers in society and break out of societal expectations. Thank you. Thank you, Serena. And finally, we're going to hear from Anushka Dar. Yeah, um, so I mean, photography has been an amazing part of my Holton experience for the past four years, and I've been so grateful to have been working with Miss McLean for this duration of time. Um, but I personally think that my most meaningful assignment was the short portfolio that I made called My Experiences with Beauty. Um, I believe that this assignment was my most meaningful as I confronted my ideals of beauty, which were informed by Eurocentric expectations. Um, as we increasingly talked about DEI, I confronted a lot of issues with self-image within myself. So I explored where I saw beauty um, in myself, in my family, and in my friends and peers. Beauty, I feel, is such a subjective term and is found everywhere. As I mentioned a little bit earlier before, but I've personally dealt with issues of self-worth tied to my appearance, and seeking beauty within myself was very difficult for me to do, especially as I grew up. Um, in this project, I highlighted different aspects of myself that are not beautiful, such as aspects like acne, crooked teeth, and body hair, as well as aspects of unconventional beauty on others, such as wrinkles, crow's feet, and scars. By highlighting these aspects on myself and others, this normalizes that not fitting into unrealistic ideals is more than okay. In fact, it is beautiful, and that being yourself is more than enough. of maintaining a clear perspective. Sometimes I find myself hyper-focusing and fixating on the tiniest miss marks. But then when I take a few steps back and view my work from afar, the painting always comes together to form a cohesive image, one my eyes and mind couldn't see from being so caught up in the moment. All I needed was perspective. Art taught me that it's okay to make mistakes. There is no right or wrong or perfect in art. Art allows me to be me.
ceramics gives me the chance to be creative during the school day and I plan to always have an artistic outlet in the future. Ceramics has taught me so much about hard work and resilience because even though sometimes our projects crack, collapse, or explode, we keep going and find a way to solve each problem. I've also learned about how art can be a means of creating social change and inspiring others to think about important issues. I've met so many amazing people during ceramics class and my time in the ceramics room will always be some of my favorite memories of Holton. I think that photography has affected my life in a ton of ways. For one thing, especially during the pandemic, it's given me the chance to get out of the house and go places to take pictures. It's also allowed me to capture some really pivotal moments in my life. And while I didn't think that having pictures at the beginning of the pandemic or of my friends would be that important in the moment, I realized how lucky I am to have them even just a few months later. Art has also allowed me to connect with people. Whether I'm making new friends in photography class or talking to a stranger after taking a candidate of them, it's been amazing to form connections through photography. Mm -hmm. 
excited to present the 2021 issue of Scroll. I'm Esther Kim and I'm one of the editors-in-chief. I'm Ava Risser and I'm the other editor-in-chief. And I'm Sarah Ernest and I'm the layout editor. This year, for the cover, we are featuring Anushka Dar's woven piece called Childhood Devoured. She chose to create this piece to re represent the shift from childhood naivete to the more distressing situations which arise from growing up. For the background picture, she found an image which captured her childhood demeanor and contrasted that with her current state of mind. She wanted to convey that becoming an adult oftentimes comes with the loss of childhood glee. However, it is not for nothing. With this loss comes a greater understanding of the world around us, and in this current age of youth activism, this understanding only propels our society forward. On the back cover is Anaku Chidambaran's ceramic piece called Chasm. In her piece, she wanted to demonstrate the growing divide in our society and how if we don't take action, this gap will soon be irreparable. As we were creating this year's magazine, we found that there were five distinct themes present in both the artwork and the writing we gathered. These five themes are COVID-19, social justice, movement, darkness, and performance. We organized both a print magazine and our online website, Scrolling, according to these various themes. And to reflect the prevalence of social justice movements this year, pieces on social justice are at the backbone of this magazine. One of these pieces is The Time Is Now. The time is now, and yet so many are sitting and waiting. 
They are the kind of allies that post an anti-racist post on Instagram, but then trip over words like transphobia and white supremacy. They are the kind of allies that will think, this couldn't possibly be a poem about me. They are the kind of allies that are not actually allies. Real issues require real change. Anti-racism isn't a belief, it's a set of actions. You will never be as uncomfortable about racism as a black person who can't breathe from police brutality. It is embarrassing that we deny this, that we claim to live in an equal country, an equal world. America tried for so long to avoid this conversation, to outrun this bullet that has already caught us. But these artists were given a paintbrush, but no canvas, no way to express themselves, to free themselves from the oppression. As a child, I clung to my environment, the beliefs, the ideals, the security of a sheltered childhood, a haven of well-known comfort, only seeing the beauty of the sparkling surface, unaware of the darkness rooted in the ground, the oppression that our country is built on. But eventually a butterfly's wings spread and fly to a rude awakening, a place where silver linings have all rained down and I grow with a greater knowledge of the world, but a lesser understanding of it. I try to navigate the storm, the waves of the new world I am discovering, but I am on a safety boat, and others are drowning. A lot of people are drowning. People on their boats reach down their hands to try and pull the people up, but give up after it becomes too uncomfortable. The waves begin to swallow the people in the water. Shots are heard. People on the boats talk about assisting the people drowning, but empty words can't fight off a storm. Only actions can promote conscious efforts to fight for the rights every human deserves. We've transitioned to working on Scrolling, the online edition of the magazine for our Sing New project, and includes both work seen in the print magazine and new art and writing from Holton students. It will be released in early June, and we're excited to share both scroll and scrolling with the whole team.